Okay, we've got an Onan DD13 carb that would look uh, like this, basically. Throwing it back together so quick. That's your vacuum inlet here. And then uh, your choke. I have the throttle shaft all, but this is the hole that goes in. This is your low speed jet. That's your high speed jet. There's where you hook your choke. So anyway, I've got this already taken apart so we can talk about a few things. Uh, as you see, the two halves, when you look at them, you can see that there's holes there. Uh, there's a hole there that actually is connected to this hole. That's all high-speed stuff right there, high-speed flow. And then this is your low-speed, that hole there. And the way you can figure this out is you can actually just examine the the casting. So this is the low speed screw and you can see the casting goes to that and that's the low speed um, where the fuel flows which goes partially into the top of the carburetor and there's a tiny hole in there that I'll point at it but tiny hole right at the edge of the where it, it uh, goes in a little bit so there's a straight part of the bore and there's that tiny hole uh, the high speed exits out of this tube and there are very tiny holes on the inside of the carb where the throttle is uh, the throttle plate would be two tiny holes in there don't know if there's enough light to show them but like I said this is the high speed and that's the high speed path so obviously if you take your straw which does fit right down there to clean that that's where you spray now this has several paths to escape because I don't have the screw in there. So like say right now, if I wanted to clean this, I would take, put my thumb over that hole so that the cleaner doesn't come out there, put this in here, and what I would do is, um, well, for one, I'd be wearing a face shield because this stuff sprays out at you. But I would look down the throat, like I'm showing in the, in the video right now with the straw in there, and what you should see out of those two holes that are at the bottom is nice clean flow. And that's the way you, you know you're getting it clean. The, uh, the low speed passes some fuel here and then some fuel, or the low speed actually, sorry. The low speed actually has the two holes. I made a mistake in my... my thing so this the low speed actually does uh contributes fuel all the time so it's when you say it's the low speed it's the the base flow is what you would actually consider it, the base amount of flow so if your low speed is plugged up you're not only going to be lean for idle but you're going to be lean all the time because it's the base level of fuel the high speed jet adds fuel only in the high speed but the low speed is always flowing so this is very important to get this clean so you would spray some in here to get all that clean you would take the low speed jet which is this one and that needs to be clean so you would spray say a towel get it wet and then uh, rub it very well make sure that's clean here's your high speed jet which does have a a rubber grommet on there that grommet is there because if it's not uh, not there 
the fuel would leak right out of the bowl. So that's one way you can lose fuel out of your bowl is if this thing goes bad. And they do disintegrate. The carb kit always comes with an uh, O-ring. This is an original seal here, and it's flat. So it's a flat seal, but the O-ring works just fine. Um, you can put a little dab of grease on there, and it, that way when you it seals against the actual sides of the casting for it. So if you put a little, little grease on that, that'll screw in there nice and... Uh, and not, you won't have to worry about tearing your seal when you put it in. So, of course, you're going to spray, spray in the high speed. Um, a lot of times to get this part clean, then I put the screw in so that I don't lose much of the spray. Because this will actually go all the way into... Um, the bowl when you do screw it in. Let me get this screwed in here quick. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the the brass end is now showing in that hole. And um, so with this in though, there's still going to be fuel flow, but at least it won't all just come out. This is the easy path for it to come out is, is where the screw sits. So then you put that straw again on this here to clean that path. And then at the same time, what I'd want to do is cover this because this right here is actually connected to that and which is connected to that when you see fuel coming out of this tube that's high speed fuel not low speed fuel that's high speed fuel coming out of there so to get this clean and then um, So you get it all through there that's you got to plug some of the holes and talking about cleaner the best by far you can actually read msds's on all the different carbon choke cleaners and they do vary a lot and what the berryman has that the others don't have as much of is it's got a high level of acetone and acetone immediately dissolves lacquer. So anytime you can find a carb cleaner that has a lot of acetone, when you look at the MSDS, that'll be a good one. Uh, here's the mistake that's made quite often. Uh, this was the factory gasket. And this is cork, which means that this gasket is original. New ones are always going to be this black, carb, more cardboardy uh, material, which is a better material. So when you put this on, well, you can really screw it up in a lot of different ways. Right now the four holes for the screws do line up, and you would actually be able to screw this together. But the problem is, it's, up, it's 180 out. Because, you know, you can get fooled because you can see the hole here. And you see part of the hole there. But what's happening is this is where the fuel actually comes in when you examine it from the fuel pump side. When I had that on there, I was blocking it off. So you'd put it together and you'd be like, now I'm going to get no fuel. What did I do? All right, so now we flip it over. And... Look at that. That's where the fuel comes in. Your Both your holes are now exposed. And this little valley here gets blocked off because you want the fuel to just come out in that spot. And that's actually reflected in the lid. This lid doesn't have a, a hole for that middle, you know, a, a place for the middle. Same thing with lining it up 
you would actually put the gasket on the lid. So here again, I'll put it on backwards. Four screw holes are lined up. You would look at this and say, well, that's lined up. That's fine. And now you can put your float in. This is the, you know, you put this on and then you would put your float on. But you would uh, be blocking the fuel again because you're 180 off. The fuel inlet lines up with this. This is the way the carb would go. Just need to make sure that it lines up. All right, now this one's installed and I could put the float on. This float has that helper spring. The way that works is this would be in here and then I'd put the pin in. And the way you install the float spring is as you're lined up, the way the spring has to be installed is the short leg is away from the fuel inlet. The long leg is towards the fuel inlet. And all you simply do is line it up like that and then go like this. And that's actually all that the spring needs to be a... a to help lighten that brass float and not give you a rich condition just because the float is uh, heavier than what the original float was. That's why that helper spring is around. So that's the overview. Um, I highly recommend when you get a kit that you, this is the, the heartbeat of the fuel pump and what it is is check valve with flappers for so you stop the flow just like a heart it operates just like a heart and what happens is over time of course these get fatigued and they don't seal so it would leak and the other thing that happens is the seats actually have rubber on them so if this is an old one the rubber of course isn't new uh, so you should always buy a carb kit with this part and replace it along with you get all your, your various washers. Uh, this one still has the uh, old gasket and that's the plunger that actually operates from this vacuum port. So the pulses of the crankcase are what moves this plunger. Uh, make sure you download your manual for an Onan of this vintage with the DD carb on it because um, these gaskets only go on one way for, for correctness. Uh, this all has still all the old gaskets on it. Uh, they do put a tab on there so you line up all the tabs. So this tab right here helps you. But uh, I've made the mistake before of putting this on in the wrong order. And when you put this gasket on in the wrong order, it'll pump fuel, but not enough fuel. Uh, because the rubber diaphragm part of it is in the wrong spot. Um, some people will take, this is the screws that are used. If you take a, a screw like this and then cut the head off, you can start the screw in the hole like it is right now. And with the head off, you can stack your pieces up to the pump. And then once you get them all stacked, you unscrew one of the threaded rods and then you know, this would be on, it would slip over too, obviously. So this would all be on, and you'd be holding it together with your thumb because this the plunger that's behind here in the spring, they just, there's nothing holding them in the spot, so you need them to stay in that spot. So you would have the threaded rod up here, so you'd unscrew one threaded rod and then replace it with your screw 
and snug that side up and then take the other threaded rod out here which is you know you just a screw that you find that's the same threads usually and then tighten that one up and it's like a no stress deal man it goes easy so that's your overview on a dd carb and how you actually clean it uh, you do not clean a carb by spraying down the throat that does absolutely nothing to clean the carb you have to get in examine where the flows are by the castings that'll tell you where they go see that the two halves actually carry a flow from one from the bottom to the top and you know that you need to uh, spray all that stuff out sometimes you need if they get real really bad pipe cleaners I've got pipe cleaners here uh, I've got the ones that I use the most this one here with the hook bent on it well guess what that one's for that's for hitting those tiny holes and you have to be careful that you're not going to make the holes in the car bigger where are my holes there they are so anyway you would just take that 90 degree bend line it up put it in there wiggle it around but the thing is if you do have crud in there breaking it loose is one thing but uh getting it all out is the other um you know this will break any any uh adhered lacquer but then now now that i poke that now is the time that i really have to spray in there and don't be stingy with your carb cleaner because if there's loosened bits and pieces of crud you need to dissolve them and the berryman's that's why it's so good it dissolves that and you spray it down in there and yeah it may shoot out clean at first but you just need to keep spraying for a while liberally and and making sure that you get the crud dissolved because it will come out uh, the other thing you can do of course is take your air nozzle and you need to go from the smallest holes like that you know before you spray so this would be after you poke it spray in there a couple times and you know you might even see something come out uh, same with the tiny hole in here put a little air in it and that way if anything's loose it should come out this one's so short that I can actually see the daylight through this hole so that's the overview thanks for watching